<laughs> ah, well, hey everyone. Uh, now, don't be confused. Uh, I wanted to try something else. Well, but uh, now in this episode, I have here my old gaming PC, which is from circa 2016 or 2017. And well, uh, why do I have it here? What I'm going to do with it? Well, I want to do some upgrades with it. The main reason is behind um, this machine as it stands here runs uh, Windows 10. And as we all know, <laughs> I hate Windows 10. And this is the reason why I switched to a Mac uh, computer. But seeing that the uh, support from uh, Windows 10 is dropping uh, at October 2025, and it is good to have at least one machine here that is running the uh, latest version of uh, Windows. Yes, but because it is uh, so. Uh, I have a MacBook here with a uh, Mac OS running here with an M1 chip here, but it is still good to have at least one uh, up-to-date uh, Windows machine here, like uh, this one here. Yeah, and uh, when I say about upgrades and such, well, I want to do some uh, hardware upgrades and also some uh, software up upgrades. And with software upgrade, I mean installing Windows 11 on it. Well, and speaking of hardware upgrades, well, I want to do uh, some things. First of all, I want to install a TPM module that uh, Windows 11 is happy for having a TPM module uh, inside it. And also, um, I'm not sure if you're seeing it or not, uh, but um, there's a water cooler inside for the uh, processor. And I mean, from an efficiency st standpoint, it is really good to have a water cooling system in it. Even for some uh, processors, it is really recommended to using a, a water cooling solution, but the water cooling inside it is a little bit uh, very old. It is from 2016, 2017, and I'm not sure if it's uh, still keeping the water inside it or if it's uh, leaking out uh, somewhere in the future. So I'm planning to remove the water cooling here and instead replacing it with a, a normal air cooler here, like uh, this one here. But this is just a safety precaution here. Yeah. Also, what I also want to do besides installing Windows 11 on it. And I want to try something, for me at least, is something uh, different. Oh, what, it, what means uh, differently? Uh, my MacBook had something inside it pretty similar, but uh, I want to uh, install a, a M.2 uh, SSD inside it or a NVMe uh, SSD inside it. And this is something I uh, didn't install uh, before, but well, this is quite an experience then, but I think it's just plug and play. <laughs> Here you can see the upgrades that I want to do, but you're seeing the case and I mean it is fine, yeah, but I want to change it. Yeah, And I have a case here from a new way, which is, yeah, it, it looks good, yeah, with a, a wood accent on the, on the front and the complete uh, glass uh, fr uh, side, it looks Pretty awesome. The only downside to this case is it doesn't have a 500 quarter inch uh, bay. But no matter how, I am starting to uh, disassemble this PC and uh, transplanting it into the new case that I have here. And doing the upgrades here and everything, and then later install Windows 11 on it on unsupported hardware. <laughs> yeah, this could be quite an experience, but hey! What should possibly go wrong? <laughs> so, let's take a look at it. Okay, here you can see the PC in a, a close-up shot. It is a Intel Core i5 6669K Skylake inside it, alongside with 16GB of DDR4 RAM and a GTX 1060 graphics card. To go inside, there is a 500W power supply, and all of this stuff goes through a Asus Maximus 8 Ranger motherboard. So I'm starting here to disassemble my old gaming PC here. Well, I was, how, how would I say, um, happily confused. <laughs> uh, well, at the front, because uh, one of the fans were held on by three screws instead of four screws. 
then it holds it together. <laughs> and then I take a look at the CPU cooler or the water cooling of the CPU. I could uh, remove three of the screws, but the fourth screw uh, wanted to see me angry. But then after 20 minutes, it was over for me. I just uh, clipped away this uh, bracket at the back. But it is okay, I'm never using the water cooling inside here again, so it is okay that I snapped it off. And then I have an empty case. I'm keeping it, just in case. And when I have the mainboard outside, I can install the TPM module and also the new CPU cooler. But let's get started with the TPM module. Uh, yeah, okay, it doesn't fit. It is the same manufacturer and they have different connectors. I'm gonna be honest here, um, I have the idea to either modify the motherboard or the module by either removing or adding a pin to them, but seeing that the pinout of those connectors are different, it means that the TPM mod module is a uh, no-go here. Well, but I know ways around the TPM module and Windows 11. But let's take a look at the CPU cooler here. And this one was pretty easy to install here. Well, okay, the fan of the CPU cooler was a little bit tricky, but it was doable. And then I took the new case here, and this is something that you can do on every PC build. Make as many room as possible. Remove anything as possible. This makes it much easier to install all the components inside it, like the motherboard now. And then I can uh, go outside and to add the uh, expansion cards in it, like the firewire card, the Wi-Fi card, and yes, also the graphics card. <laughs> My GTX 1060. <laughs> then I installed the four fans inside it, three at the front and one at the back. This made for me a uh, much more sense for me with the topic of airflow because the GPU and the CPU cooler is also bringing the air out. And then I added the power supply with its thousand cables hanging on it. <laughs> and then I can do a little bit of cable management. But I'm not letting you see it, how I'm angrily uh, put together all the cables and making it neat. Well, but to be honest, I just connected everything and put the side panel uh, just in it so uh, nobody sees it. <laughs> and with that, the upgrade is here done. But there's this foil on the side that has to be removed. Ah, it's always satisfying. And then I can take a look if everything works after all that I did to it. Okay, and it appears to be booting. Okay, I did forgot to add a keyboard to it, but how I'm going to press F1 if no keyboard was detected? But this is something someone has to uh, explain to me pretty clearly here. <laughs> oh well, the BIOS did wanted something, I don't know. But I just uh, plugged in a Windows 11 installation medium inside it. And to this point, the system didn't really had some complaints that the hardware is unsupported. But yes, at some point, the system has reported that the computer is incompatible with Windows 11 because of the missing TPM and the incompatible uh, CPU here. But there's a way around. For that you have to uh, press Shift and F10 uh, at the installation assistant to open the registry. And inside it you have to create a new key and inside it a dworld value for the TPM check. Well, I've looked it on the internet myself, but after I've configured the hard drive and everything, there was no message of incompatible hardware. <laughs> I don't know why Microsoft has it inside it that's we need the secure boot and the TPM uh, check in it. Well, I think I give them a call tomorrow and ask them who the heck came to the idea of making these requirements. <laughs> well, and after the installation, there was the OBE, or also known as the out of box experience. I just clicked through it and what was my fault, I connected this PC to the internet. Okay, the computer did some updates then, but I didn't understand why because I created the installation medium a few days ago, so why? <laughs> and inside it, the setup is pretty lying to me. It says good things come to you. Uh, yeah, right. Mm -hmm. Because after that, uh, it came. There was no way around the Microsoft account. And 
I was really in rage. I mean, listen to yourself, yeah? Weil, ey, hier, diese... Hier, das ist... Ja, da... So, das sollen sie mal richtig hier, die von Microsoft. Ja? Wenn sie so so ein Bastard hier. Ja, das ist ja s*** hier. Die Jammer. Ihre Leute hier mit Microsoft konnte ja kein Well, I was angry. <laughs> yes, probably there was also a way around this Microsoft account. But at this time I was super annoyed by it that I just angrily typed in my Microsoft account in it. This is something uh, I'm pretty happy about uh, macOS or Linux. Uh, okay, macOS is based on Linux, but on those two systems you can create a local account by default. Well, I almost wanted to say, if you don't believe me with the local account, um, <laughs> This thing is heavy. Well, I almost wanted to say, if you don't believe me with the uh, local account things, and you can leave a subscribe uh, down there because at the next video I'm planning to restore this emac here. So, if you want to see that, leave a subscribe down there so you can see this video then. And well, after the setup is done, I can do something with this machine. I'm first going to change the background here, but before that, we have to install Chrome. Microsoft Edge is a wonderful browser to install Chrome here. <laughs> ah, and this looks quite better now. And then we can also see how this machine is at gaming. I'm just starting the Minecraft Java edition in the version 1.21.4, which is the up-to-date version by the date of this video. And well, okay, I can do a little bit of shame self-promotion here for my Minecraft server here. The IP here is mc.versexp.net, uh, but don't be confused, this is a mainly German server here, so um, every text there is a German. <laughs> but with wraps uh, alongside it and in the normal settings as possible, only the vSync is off and the frame rate is at unlimited, the computer has 300 to 400 FPS there. Well, this is nuts. And this is Java Minecraft and the vanilla Minecraft. So this is quite incredible for this machine. And well, then I say the PC here is finished. Okay, for this video it is finished. And I do wanted to do some uh, upgrades to it uh, later because uh, you're seeing that one of the RGB fans is not lining up. So I have to swap it out in the future. But what I also wanted inside this machine, but I didn't have the opportunity uh, to build on one uh, on uh, eBay, I want to have an RTX 2080 graphics card inside it, but in the Founders Edition here, but with the RTX 2080 it would be a little bit time fitting to this machine, and also the RTX 2080 can do some ray tracing, which would be also quite interesting in this machine. But no, no, I'm not planning to use this machine as my main machine here to do some editing and such because uh, I don't want to give up my uh, MacBook here. And also I'm a little bit disappointed about the newest Windows operating system, and especially after this Windows 11 here even more. But it is still good to have at least one up-to-date Windows machine here. But what do you think about this build here? Or do you have any uh, recommendations what I should uh, do with this machine? Well, leave it down in the comments and I can also do a short video about it. And it, just in case if I have forgot something here, I can always do a short video about it. And well, there's nothing standing here anymore on my script here. So that was for me and we see us in the next video.